Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to this new appointment with the Get Familiar With. Um, this video follows the previous one where I showed to you the two versions of the Muendomat. The original one and the restyling, uh, actually the only one present uh, uh, on the market. In this video, I will show you in details uh, the old version of the Amoendomat uh, because it's still the most present uh, in the hospital around the world. In a separate video, uh, I will also show to you the, the, the characteristic and the upgrade of the new version for those people that want to move from one version to one or they are wondering to buy the new version. As I told you, the Endomat is the companion or was designed as the companion of the resetoscope by Jacquemus in the already far uh, 1989. Uh, the pumps came on the market in 1990, so it's already quite a whole device, but still working very well if connected with the resetoscope. As I mentioned in the previous video, the uh, way of working of the uh, endomat is made by the feedback between the irrigation generated by the rolling pump here, the peristaltic rolling pump here, and the aspiration that is a fixed one coming from uh, uh, generate as a, a vacuum created by this uh, motor that aspirate air from the from the can and create a flow of aspiration from the resetoscope. Uh, the pump reads the impedance of the uh, liquid passing through the standard uh, silicon uh, tubing set through this sensor over here. When I will uh, switch on the pump, I will show you how it works. Um, then on the uh, front panel, we have the uh, on-off uh, uh, button here. There is, uh, here we are, the uh, three beeps that tells us that the pump did his check and it, everything is working properly. And uh, then uh, the three couples of plus minus bottom that uh, uh, are used to regulate the parameters, the default uh, uh, parameters. Until the lamps blimp uh, means that the pump is not fixed. As soon as we confirm or modify the setup, then the pump takes its position and it's ready to work. This area here is limited for the aspiration so we can regulate the uh, aspiration bar and the white bottom um, is the bottom to start the aspiration. The other one here is for the irrigation and start the rolling pump over here. So we have to set up the silicon tubes, I will show you later, and the a sensor a membrane will be plugged on this sensor. In this upper part, uh, you have uh, uh, printed on the screen some numbers and lines. And there, there are numbers highlighted here and uh, a bar of LED with the name EAST. EAST means hysteroscope and is the default mode for the pump. Um, if you buy a dedicated uh, tubing set for laparoscopy because as I told you this pump can be used also as irrigation aspiration device in laparoscopy. Uh, in the tubing set there is a small, uh, sense, uh, small uh, uh, um, button here that change the parameters, it's not easy to find, that change the parameters of the pump. See a lap mode and the lap mode brings the fact that other numbers are highlighted and there are exactly the double of the previous parameter. This is because in laparoscopy you need a higher flow and a higher pressure, while in hysteroscopy these uh, uh, parameters must be lower. So please don't use the uh, laparoscopic tubing set in hysteroscopy because uh, uh, the parameter will be totally wrong and the patient health can be in danger. Here we are with the connection of the tubing sets. You see on the table we have the receptor and uh, all the cables we need for the connection together with the receptoscope. The first cable is uh, this one that 
goes connected to the uh, aspiration part of the endomat, as I told you before, and then uh, plug it into the receptor. So far, we have uh, aspiration of air, thanks to the engine here, from the receptor. The aspiration of air generates a vacuum, so this area should be connected to the tubes that goes then finally into the aspiration of the receptoscope. Okay, so this system has been, the irrigation has been connected. Aspiration of air into the receptor, vacuum and air suck and liquid, aspiration of liquid from the receptoscope. Now we have to connect the uh, irrigation tubing set. That looks a little bit more complicated. So the first part goes to the sack, okay? And you can connect two sacks at the same time. This is in order to reduce the time between changing on one sack with the new one. Okay, so we can, you can keep one close and the other open as soon as one is getting to the end, you close and open immediately the other one. Then you have this part, intermediate part, where you have the sensor for the pressure or the membrane for the pressure. This membrane, soft membrane here, if the resistance of the fluid is the one calculated by the technician originally, nothing will happen. But if the resistance increases, it means we reach a certain pressure at the end of the system, it means at the tip of the scope, this membrane will increase in size and will be like a dome. And the dome, because the, the sensors is applied here on the membrane, okay, the dome of the membrane will touch the white part of the sensor. And look what's happening if I touch with my finger. The, sen the, la the LED starts flashing. Okay, so imagine that instead of my fingers, you have the membrane, the dome of the membrane getting bigger, and uh, it will assign a pressure, an increased pressure inside the, the system. So we finally plug okay, the dome into the pressure sensor. And then you have the blue tube here that must be, it's univoc in terms of position. So it goes only in one position like this one. You cannot invert the insertion. This is because each tubing set is a part of the tube does it is works, okay? Then you see the rolling pump is not active. It will be active as soon as I will start the pump. They will come out these small rollers that push the tube against the wall of the, of the pump and generate the, the flow. And finally, the end of the tubing set that goes into the irrigation stopcock of the resetoscope. And here the system is complete. Aspiration of air into the receptor, vacuum, aspiration through the tube here, the connected, from the tube, and liquid from the sac into the system, into the rolling pump, and therefore into the, into the receptoscope. So by so doing, the system is uh, complete. You don't have to uh, add anything, but all these difficult connectors here, connection, has been uh, simplified in the new version of the, uh, of the Endomat, as you will see in uh, the next uh, uh, video. And now, once the, all the connection has been done, I will show to you how the pump physically uh, works. We have the sack of liquid behind me, and here we have the resetoscope. So the irrigation in the resetoscope is closed. I open and I start the flow. This just to show to you that at the beginning, the uh, liquid has to pass through the whole circuit and you have to wait until all the bubbles 
uh, present in the circuit uh, disappear. This because if the bubbles goes into the cavity, then it will be very difficult to aspirate or to remove the bubbles due to the surface tension, the higher surface tension of the bubble uh, itself. So you have to remove everything, all the bubbles. And this happens also when you exchange the sac. In fact, I recommend you to use the Y connector to keep one sac open and the other one closed. And once the used one is getting close to the end, but it's not still ended, you have to open at the same time even the other one and then close the, uh, the previous one. Otherwise, some bubbles will uh, remain into the circuit and will be moved into the uterus. So you see now, uh, the pump is not uh, perfectly located, as I told you when I described the easy pump. I told you that the pump must be a little bit higher than the body of the patient. Otherwise, the gravity pressure will affect the system. So this is the reason why there appear a couple of LED present uh, uh, highlighted in the pressure sensors. If you move this a little bit higher, let's say this this position compared to the body of the patient that is here, you will see that even the, the two LED will uh, get off. Now the can is getting, uh, it's filled by the water. Let's start the aspiration. We start the aspiration, you see, you can hear the, from the noise, the pump located inside is aspirating air from, uh, the, uh, from the canister, from the receptor. And now I put in the tip of the receptoscope into the, into the water and you will see that the liquid start flowing into the tube due to the suction effect of the vacuum instead. And you see the liquid getting into the, into the uh, uh, receptor, into the fold and accumulating here. Okay, so now the system is working properly. Obviously here we don't have pressure because it's a, it's a water, it's an open cavity, so it will uh, get fl fluid in and, uh, and fluid will be aspirated. But you can see how the circuit works, okay? So we have the inflow and the outflow working at the same time. One recommendation, there are some uh, colleagues, they do not connect the aspiration uh, and they work only with the irrigation. This is a nonsense from my point of view because here you lose, uh, uh, not connecting the, the aspiration to the system, you will lose the feedback between inflow and outflow, and therefore you will not be able to control the interuterine pressure. They play with the stopcock here, located here, try to open and close the stopcock and do it a kind of manual regulation of the aspiration. And I think this is not a proper way to, uh, to do. So you have to keep the machine as has been designed with the inflow and the outflow connected with the uh, uh, good parameters. So getting close to the end of this uh, video tutorial, I would like to uh, remark one point. As I told you, the endomat, the AMU endomat, has been decided to work perfectly with the receptoscope. But I understand uh, some people want also to use in, uh, in office hysteroscopy. So I will show to you which are the parameters uh, on which you have to set up the pump in order to work properly with the office hysteroscope with pressure around 45, 50 millimeter of mercury. This is a result of years of experience and study done measuring the real interuterine pressure uh, using the AMU endomat. The parameters are reported on the pump. As you can see, it's a little bit more than 300 milliliter per minute of flow, 100 millimeter, 100 millimeter of mercury for the pressure, and the minimum of aspiration. Minimum means the first light on, uh, on, the, f on the bar of uh, aspiration. Uh, with this flow, again, you will get 45, 50 millimeter of mercury if the endomat is connected to the uh, size 4, size 5 or bio from castors. Another remark, don't think that the increasing the flow you will increase the performance. No, the flow uh, increase the performance up 
to a certain time, if you increase too much the flow, you will get an opposite effect of reduced flow inside the uterine cavity. It's called turbulence. The turbulence is the same the airplane uh, encounter uh, and uh, it, it's a kind of break in uh, proceeding, in moving forward uh, um, for the liquid. So please take note of these parameters. These are mandatory in office hysteroscopy uh, to get 45, 50 millimeter of mercury. And with this, I will thank you very much for being with me. And I invite you to the next video who will be the examination, the discover of the new uh, generation of uh, uh, Amu Endoma. Thank you very much. <laughs>